As the X100V continues to grow in popularity, meaning that it will again be harder and harder to get your hands on it until a new surplus comes, it only makes sense that there are people all over the internet telling you what are the best alternatives to this amazing camera. As I said before, I personally like the XE4. There will be people that will tell you about the Ricoh GR3 or the GR3X, maybe the Fujifilm X70 or the XF10, maybe even the X-Pro3, the X-Pro2, the X-Pro1. All these ideas from Leica Q to Sony's fixed 35 millimeter camera, they're all being thrown out there. But it really kind of just blows because honestly, when you take a look at them bit by bit by bit, there's only one or two cameras that actually can be considered the real Fujifilm X100V alternative. And it's not any of the ones that I explained before. I'll tell you why, and I'll also take the time to tell you exactly which cameras you wanna look for if you can't get your hands on Fujifilm's X100V. And for all of you fanboys who are going to be so upset because I'm not worshiping the X100V, I'm not gonna worship the GR3, I'm not gonna worship the XE4, I'm not gonna worship the Leica Q, remember you can always give me very, very mean, angry comments down below. You can always dislike this video, and you can always share it to Analog Circle Jerk or any other kind of forum to where people can badmouth me and view this video so they can take turns leaving negative comments and disliking this video. Make sure you do that. And until then, go f yourself. Listen, you guys, I just want to get this out of the way. The X100V is not a camera that will number one, change your life. And number two, it's not going to get you any different images than an X-T4, an X-T3, an X-E4, an X-S10, an X-Pro3. Any of those cameras will get you. They will all get you the exact same images of the X100V. So when it comes to color signs, rendering, et cetera, et cetera, get that out of here. The X100V is the exact same camera with the exact same sensor across the board. Let me just get a couple things out of the way. Just because a camera is the same as the X100V, meaning the XE4 and the X-Pro3, does not mean you're gonna get the same experience. Now, the reason why people love the X100V comes down to size. So size has to matter in this. Like a Q, a Sony's, I believe it's the R1X, and the XE4 and the X-Pro3, they're all going to be too big to match what the X100V can do. Great cameras, all fantastic. They just don't fit the bill. Do I think they will work? Absolutely. Do I recommend the XC4 and a 23 millimeter F2 or an X-Pro3 and a 23 millimeter F2, both of which you can actually get cheaper than you can get an X100V right now? Um, yeah, I would recommend that. But are a lot of people gonna bite for it? No, and one of the reasons has to be because that size. Now, I personally believe that 23 millimeter F2 is just as good, if not better, than the lens on the X100V. The only thing that people can gripe about is, well, it doesn't focus uh, when you're shooting macro shots or from macro distances and it's kind of soft, wide open. Stop shooting macro shots with non-designated macro lenses. Of course, they're going to suck. Stop, stop complaining. Stop it. So those four cameras, let's just rule them out because of size. So Sony, goodbye, like a goodbye. The XC4, love it, but goodbye. And the X-Pro3, love it, camera that saved my photography life, goodbye, because you're not getting the exact same size. You can put other pancake lenses on there, but until Fujifilm releases a 23 2.8, or until Voigtlander comes out with a pancake size 23 millimeter F2, that's manual focus, you're not gonna get the exact same compact size as you would with the X100V. So the next cameras that I see people discussing all the time is the X70 and the XF10, from Fujifilm. Now, a couple things about this. Listen, those are 28 millimeter effective focal lengths. I don't know about you guys, but I love 28 millimeters, love the look of it, love every single thing about it. The biggest issue though, when it comes to 28 millimeter versus 35, there are a lot of people that shoot 35 that can't hang on 28 millimeter. You can talk to my boy Dorian Coleman about this. It is a complete and total different beast. One is not better than the other, but there is a different element to both. 35 millimeter you can use as a portrait lens. It doesn't give you as much information as 28, and so you can pick and choose what you do and don't want in there, it's easier to set up. 28 millimeter is a lens of chaos. It does nothing but really hyper focus on the complete story. And instead of telling a story about an individual and scenery, you're telling a story with 28 millimeter uh, of the scenery and how it relates back to the individual. You have to learn your layering. You have to learn how to manipulate your foreground and your background. And a lot of times you guys aren't going to get that nice creamy 
rich depth of field, which produces nice creamy rich bokeh for a lot of you guys in those lenses like you would in the 23 millimeter F2 coming out of the X100V. Now they are both Fujifilm cameras, but I want you to be aware that just because they're Fujifilm cameras, just because they're small, doesn't mean you're getting the same experience. The ergonomics are way different. The accessories, they're not as readily available. The batteries are not that fantastic. You're gonna have a camera that's dying multiple times multiple times throughout the use. I love the X70. Never used the XF10, but it's basically the same thing. I love the X70. The build was amazing. It was great quality. I, someone who loves 28 millimeter, um, enjoyed using it every single time I did. We're going to see the Orca show because Shelly wants to see it. Yeah, but, it's, but we're cripping over here. Christmas. Merry Christmas. But I just have to say, it's not the best option out there to be something that can replace what would have been reserved for the X100V in your little corazoncito. Now that we got those out of the way, one of the biggest ones that people continue to recommend is the Ricoh GR3 and the Ricoh GR3X. And I love those cameras. They are fantastic. Produce some of my favorite images of all time using the Ricoh GR3, amazing camera. But there is only one reason why the Ricoh GR3 actually isn't a camera that I would consider a replacement for the X100V or something that you can substitute in place of if you can't find an X100V. It doesn't have to do with the focal length because yeah, it's 28 millimeter, but at the same time, that lens is so damn sharp and it's so damn fun and the way everything works and the simulations built into that are so amazing that honestly, I wouldn't even care. I would totally overlook that just because of it. It's not because of build because even though it is kind of feels like it's a little bit of a toy with size and everything. The buttons are amazing. The placement of the scroll wheels, of every single dial, uh, everything that works is fantastic. It has a great solid feel to it. It is great to hold in the hands and the size matches. It's small, it, it, it packs a huge punch. There are accessories readily available for it. The battery isn't that bad whenever it comes to battery life. It actually does a really good job. That camera has IBIS. There's so many things that go for it. But the only reason why I will never recommend a GR3 or a GR3X again until Rico actually listens to its customers and fixes is a goddamn scroll wheel in the back. Listen, for someone who bought that for highlight weighted metering, and I know everyone's gonna say, switch the front dial, switch the front dial. You can't, because if you wanna shoot highlight weighted metering and not shoot in full uh, manual the whole time, and you don't wanna have to worry about accidentally hitting a scroll wheel and it jumping, you're going to be very, very disappointed in the Ricoh GR3. Couple that with the fact that the amount of dust that can get in there and the amount of complaints people have about dust that gets in their GR3, having to ship it off, um, how much it costs to get it uh, fixed, the fact that people have to do workarounds and sometimes super glue the back scroll wheel, which is a whole you know, feature that you're paying for and all these things, I can't recommend it because of reliability. Why would I pay for something, recommend something, and use something that I know from personal experience with two different GR3s could go and crap out on you and the fact that if you go on reddit right now it's very easy to find a $500, $600, sometimes $450 Ricoh GR3 or Ricoh GR3X for no other reason than back scroll reel is not functional or dust is in the lens. So if none of those work D, then what's the best alternative to the Fuji X100V? Well, when we take into account build, when we take into account the film simulations that people love, take into account the accessories, the size, the look of it, all of these things the best alternative, hands down, to the X100V is the X100F. See, in the X100F and the X100V, the build that you're getting in that is a way more robust build than the X100T. I, myself, had a copy, and I noticed that the bottom of the X100T was plastic. How do I know this? Because I accidentally just bumped it against something. Don't even think I dropped it. I literally think, uh, emptying out my camera bag, I just rolled it. It just rolled out, and it got a crack on the edge near where the battery door compartment is, and it's plastic. It's not that uncommon for Fujifilm to do it. The X-T30s are built like this as well, but it is something to keep in mind. And again, that battery, big issue. But the X100F, the reason why I think that is the best alternative and the only alternative for whenever it comes to the X100V is this. It is very, very similar in every single area except for two. Number one, the fact that, well, it doesn't have the newest lens from Fujifilm on the X100 line. And let's be honest here, people love to criticize the X100F. Oh, but wide open when you're shooting in the corners and at macro distances, it is very, very soft. Again, uh, why are we obsessed with shooting every single thing in street with group photos at F2? Because if you wanna shoot a portrait, 
and you don't have your subject in the center of a portrait at f2 and you're shooting them always to the side um, you're kind of asking for that because wide open on almost any lens in the corners you're not getting the same amount of sharpness as you are in the middle and even more than that stop shooting macro on cameras that aren't designed for macro photography with lenses that aren't designed for macro photography stop complaining about that Stop complaining about it. that's like me going to a restaurant and I know, hey, you know what? Some places have Beyond Meat burgers. And so I go to Burger King and ask for a regular burger and I'm pissed because it's not Beyond Meat. They have a burger for that shit. Order the right lens if you want to shoot macro photography. But the X100F, that lens is still fantastic. Stop down to f2.8 all the way to f11 and you are going to have a nice, amazing, crisp, sharp shot throughout no matter what. Low light is going to be able to handle it pretty much exactly the same as the X100V. The only benefit is from tests that people have done and myself, I don't know if I put a video, I think I have put a video out on the difference between the X-Trans 3 and the X-Trans 4 sensor, low light grain is a little bit easier to taste and a little bit easier to take in the X100F and the X-Trans 3 sensor than the X-Trans 4 sensor, even though the X-Trans 4 sensor is sharper. There's something you're just really handing off there. The X-Trans 4 sensor also does have more punchier, vibrant colors, but I like the X-Trans 3 sensor that is in the X100F, the X-T2, the X-Pro2, and the X-H1 for the reason being it is a nice, soft, image it is very i don't want to say filmic but it's very filmic it's very dreamy light and airy and when you have highlights they roll off in such a way that a lot of people are trying to replicate that look with a black promis filter and so you have that in the x100f but whenever it comes to controls and usage and everything else uh, being able to record videos i even think the x100f ended up receiving f-log um, you can go look at jason roman's doc easy's channel a lot of his fujifilm videos and his talking head portions were recorded on the x 100 f i believe in log and if you look the autofocus is doing just fine he has a lot of stuff going on behind him a lot of dynamic uh images a lot of dynamic uh, areas where he's shooting at and it works just fine the x100 f also has you know the same battery the same one sd card slot you can also get the exact same square hoods. It's got so many things that are very, very similar, even an ND filter. I don't believe it has uh, strong as an ND filter, and I know you can't use it in video, but still, it still has the built-in ND filter. It still has the leaf shutter you want. There's so many things that are going for it, and if I'm being honest, majority of people who are using an X100F, if you were to switch to the X100V, yes, the upgrades are going to be nice. Being able to have classic negative, is going to be fantastic. Being able to have almost weather sealing and then you can buy something to help weather seal it must be fantastic and a little bit sharper of a lens, it, it must be great. But it's not gonna be the end all be all, especially people that shoot street photography and they're shooting at lower apertures. Couple that with the fact that you can add in the WCL and the TCL, either version one or version two, and they will both work perfectly. You basically have 90% of the X100V in the X100F, save for a couple things like maybe better autofocus. I'm guessing the weather ceiling, and I can't even think of anything else that would be completely different between those two. You see, you can go a lot of different ways to get the X100V experience, but we have to remember the X100V experience isn't really all too much about the actual performance of the camera with everything that I see. It's the look of the camera. It's the feeling of the leaf shutter. It's the ability to go with an OVF and an EVF and being able to switch back and forth. And it's the size and the discreteness that a lot of people love. It has nothing to do most of the time with the image quality because if that's the case, everyone should be raving about the X-C4, the X-T4, the X-T3, so on and what have you. Uh, it probably doesn't have anything to do with the weather ceiling because that, if that was the case, people would talk about the X-Pro3 and people would be making a huge, a way bigger deal about how it's not completely weather seal. There's so many things that we skip and we don't care about on the X100V when it's on another camera, but because the X100V has the looks and the X100V has the size, we're kind of falling in love with it and we're saying that everything else that comes with it goes over and above, but does it really. I hope for those of you that are going to be mad at me for making these statements and say that this clickbait, understand that it is. And thanks for clicking and thanks for being baited. But all that being said, take it light, take it easy, have a good one.